Hey there, are you ready for our next riveting experience? Well, buckle up, the fun and excitement is about to begin. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the garage. So recently I decided that I would like to be able to have a motor on the back of my kayak. And my intention is to use a, a, a trolling motor very sparingly. Usually what I think, the, the only time I'm going to use it is when I'm in, a, in an area like the Columbia that has some uh, current. The last time I was uh, out on the Columbia was for the Wallula tournament last year and it had some pretty ripping current and I'll have a link here to the video where I talk about that, that particular tournament. If you're interested, you can click on that. Uh, and in that situation, it would have been really nice to have an electric motor. So uh, I also have a video that I will put out uh, relatively soon on how I put together the uh, mounting bracket and stuff for the trolling motor. Um, and uh, when I have that set up, I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so if I put a motor on my kayak, the question is, do I need to register it? Well, in our meeting that we had as our kickoff meeting for the tournaments, um, one of the gentlemen that I have a great deal of respect for said, um, this is what I did as far as registration goes, but you should do your own research. And his comment was that he had spoken with multiple um, jurisdictions and, and uh, officers of the law, sheriffs, conservation officers, the like, and asked them, do I need to register my kayak? And in each case, they said, no, it doesn't meet the criteria. On the other hand, I had watched another video that uh, Tyler Hicks did, Spilt Milk, on uh, YouTube, where he said, I registered my kayak because if you're in federal waters, it needs to be registered. So I thought, well, why not just look up the law and follow the law? That seems like the reasonable thing to do. So that's what I did. I spent several hours doing that. And uh, I'm going to share with you that research that I did. So let's take this conversation and move it over to the PC and I'll show you what I found and what it means. Okay, so uh, I'm on the PC now. And before we get started here, let me just say that I am not a lawyer, nor do I portray one on TV. So uh, take all this with a grain of salt. Um, I'm just sharing with you the research that I did and you guys can make decisions based on that and you can do your own research. And I will link this stuff that I found in the, uh, in the description bar. So if you, have any, if you have any questions about what I was looking at, uh, there will be links, you can go look at that. So the first Google search that I did was registering my kayak um, in Washington state. And this is what popped up is very near the top of the list. And so when I clicked on it, it did appear to be what I needed, right? And this is uh, the Recreation and Conservation Office for Washington State. And I can see that it is wa.gov. So I know that this is a Washington State government sponsored website. I need to know, do I need to register my vessel? Oh, look here, it says register your vessel, right? There's all the information I should need. And it gives a description of all the things that need to be registered and then uh, accept when your vessel is. So these ex these things down below are exceptions to the rule. And uh, according here to this website, it says a canoe, kayak, or not propelled by a motor or a sail. So if it's a canoe or a kayak, then it doesn't need to be uh, registered. Um, then the next document says less than 16 feet in length, which that's a kayak and has a motor of 10 horsepower or less and is used on non-federal waters only. Okay. And then this other one doesn't apply to, to kayaks here. So, um, that seems to sound as if I don't need to register my kayak, but if this applies, which I think it does because it describes the size of the motor, um, then I need to make sure that I'm on non-federal waters. But before I get into that, let's just, you know, let's acknowledge something here. This is a paraphrasing of the actual law. This is what somebody wrote up to make it a little bit more understandable to the general public based on what the RCW says. And I 
I'm a very untrusting soul, so I went and looked at the RCW. And so on the RCW, this is the language that's listed in the RCW, and this is exemptions um, for registering a vessel. Um, so in this language, it says a vessel under 16 feet in overall length uh, that has no propulsion machinery of any type or that is not used on water subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. So it says nothing about federal navigable waters. It says waters subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Now that could be mean the same thing. It could be that the person that paraphrased it for the recreation department there uh, knew what they were doing and they have the information right. Well, let's do, there are a government site, so perhaps we should just accept that. Um, and then it goes on to say uh, propulsion machinery of 10 or less horsepower. So that's the exemption right there. It's listed here in the RCW. Okay, so I just noticed here um, on the Washington State Licensing Department's website, they have something listed here completely different. It says vessels with propulsion machinery that draw 250 watts or less and propel the vessel no faster than 10 miles per hour and are not used on water subject to the jurisdiction of the United States or the high seas beyond the territorial seas for vessels owned in the United States. So this language is a lot closer to what is actually in the RCW, but this is <laughs> it's not in the RCW at all. But where the heck did that come from? So um, a little bit of confusion, but I did a little research and I found that language is actually in the Senate Bill 6120, and it says as passed by the, uh, and to be enacted by the legislature of the United States of Washington. So I'm not sure if this actually ever did get converted to um, a bill, um, but this was passed in 2020, and it's still not listed in the RCW, but the Washington State Licensing Department is using that as, <laughs> as its requirements. So I'm going to make a tentative assumption <laughs> that it was passed. I don't know. Um, we have two different we have two different Washington websites that are conflicting with each other. Not in a big way, granted, but they do conflict. And so it, it does. Hey, know the law, man. Just know the law. So. Um, I'm going to go back to this question in um, what is waters subject to the jurisdiction of the United States? What what is the definition of that? And I Googled the hell out of it and couldn't find any definition for it. Not on a Washington Gov site nor on a uh, um, U.S. Gov site. So I can't tell you what that is. So. Barring the fact that I can't find a definition of that, I am going to default back to this this website because somebody, at least somebody in the Washington state government thinks that this is what it means, which is, um, if we go, hold on, let's pull up the actual, I've already saved it. So let's pull this up and look at the, there we go. So they link a website or a PDF document that's federal navigable waters in Washington state. So are all federal navigable waters subject to the jurisdiction of the United States? Yeah, probably. Okay. So if that's the case, this looks to be a, it may, perhaps not a comprehensive um, list of waters in Washington, but certainly the vast majority of the ones that someone might mistake to be federal navigable waters. And so here we got navigable under federal jurisdiction. So they actually say it here that that's subject to jurisdiction, right? And so each one of these bodies of water is, um, is documented here and listed. And if we look down here, um columbia river navigable that is under the jurisdiction of the federals so 
if you're in a Columbia River, you could be cited for not having a registered kayak. Now, I fish out of Lake Sammamish, right? So let's just take a little look at Lake Sammamish. Well, there's the North Creek, which is a tributary of the Sammamish River. And North Creek's not very big. But anyway, uh, it's, it's not. Okay, that's a good sign. That's a good sign for old Pat because he fishes out of Lake Sammamish. Well, here's Sammamish Lake. Uh, oh, oh, navigable under federal jurisdiction. Well, there's a, there is a spillway halfway between Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish that you can't get a boat over. You'd be hard-pressed to get a kayak over it in most situations. All summer long, there's just a trickle going over that thing, and I wouldn't want to get my kayak uh, over that thing. Um, so I'm not sure why it's considered navigable. Probably at the time that these were defined, it, that spillway wasn't there. It was put in relatively recently to as a, a way of um, leveling the water in between Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish and controlling it. Um, but anyway, according to this document, uh, the entire Sammamish River, which is which connects the Lake, uh, Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish, uh, that is also considered navigable. So for me, the two main bodies of water that I fish in, which is Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish, those would be considered under the jurisdiction of the federal government or the U.S. So um, I think based on this information, for me, I'm going to have to register my kayak. Now, if you've got a sizable farm pond in your backyard and you want to tool around in it with your kayak and an electric motor, 100% you do not need to register that, that vessel. But if you're in any one of these waters, then technically you probably should register your kayak. Now, my friend who asked his local law enforcement agencies, hey, do I need to register my kayak? And their response was, no, it doesn't meet the criteria. I don't know. I don't know how they could possibly say that, except for. My guess is that they don't find this particular um, information that's provided here um, convincing or clear enough for them to actually cite somebody. So they may be under the impression or the feeling that, hey, you'd only need to have it registered if you were stopped by a federal agent and he or she decided to cite you for not having a registered vehicle or registered vessel. That could be the case. I don't know. But based on what I'm reading, it certainly does look like you need to have your kayak registered unless you're in a body of water not listed here as uh, under the jurisdiction. Okay, so that's what I found. Um, it's clear as mud, deep as the sea, and I, I'm only going to register mine because it seems like the appropriate thing to do. But again, now I understand why my friend said, you do you, <laughs> and I'll do me, because it's not particularly clear or well documented. But anyway, so if uh, you were curious about whether you needed to register your kayak or not, that's the information I have for you. Uh, thanks for stopping by the channel, and... Uh, like and subscribe, all that yummy stuff. Appreciate you. Thanks.